Hey, Shalom, all praises unto Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Okay, double honest to the apostles of Great Millstone. And honest you brothers will be pushing this truth and sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. So I'm gonna do um, a quick video here on um on simp culture and it's Edomite, which is the so-called white man. Okay, Edomite for the most part. Okay, it's Edomite origins. Okay. This is this simp culture that you have in this society today of uh, a man having one woman, okay, a man having to bow down to a woman's every desire, okay, that's not that's not biblical, and that's most certainly not our culture. It's not the culture of the Hebrew Israelites. So when you see the black uh, Negroes, Hispanics, and Native, Native Americans, and all the Israelites scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, you think about their 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 um their culture. Okay, their culture and what they're about is contrary against the simp culture, which is interesting because the, they'll be the ones, because we are the Israelites, okay, we do go overboard with everything. That's what makes us great when we do it in righteousness. But that's why you have a heavy spirit of simping, especially within the Negro, Hispanic, Native American community. Okay, all right. And, and, and this comes not from our scriptures. Okay, this culture does not come from the Bible. Simping is not biblical. Simping is anti-biblical. Okay, it's against the scriptures. And we're going to see it all about that. Okay, I'm not going to go too, too deep into, into everything. And I don't really like doing too many videos regarding women because I find a hell of a lot of people watch those types of videos. But when it comes to the, you know, the, the things that's going to be rudimentary for salvation, you know, it gets a handful of hits here and there. But nevertheless, in the interest of... um. Of, of staying circumspect and, and touching on every point I'll do this one um, and, 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 and and some of this material I got from um, from Dallas I believe the brothers in in Dallas uh, I believe uh, um, uh, they had gone into some of this before and um, you know I'll just touch on a few a few points okay so it says the concept so this is this is this is what happens when you go into the word romance okay all right, with reference to the emotion love, okay, which is actually a doing word, okay, as in when you go to the book of Second John, the first chapter and the sixth verse, was it Second John 1 and 6? Is it Second John 1 and 6? All right, uh, 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 forgive me if I misquote that scripture, but uh, rather more mis, mis um, direct that, uh, that scripture, but the quote goes something like this. It says, and this is love that we walk after this, his commandments, this is talking about Dallas. Okay, this is the commandments that you have heard from the beginning. Okay, All right. So that's love according to the scriptures. Okay, so let's read a little bit of this. It says the concept of romantic love was popularized in Western culture by the concept of courty love. Okay, so we take you can read that the rest for yourself if you will. But let's go into courty love. Okay, so it says there why uh, uh, um. Why uh, uh, courty love, right, was a me medieval European literary concept, uh, uh, concept conception of love that emphasized no nobility and chivalry, okay? And that's what you hear uh, these women be talking about, and that's what you hear a lot of these dudes, these, these simp, simp, simp individuals are uh, talking about. You're going to be chivalrous, you're going to be do this, that, and the third. But that's not biblical, okay? That's not that's not how men conducted themselves in terms of uh, in terms of biblical culture. Now, if you want to do something for your woman, dude, it's your woman. OK, you do whatever you want to do with her. But as the as to set that up as chivalry as the standard, that's not biblical. OK, so it says medieval literature is filled with examples of knights setting out on adventures and performing various services for ladies. OK, because of their courty love. All right. So this is almost like an adulterous. Uh, uh, um, uh, interaction, right? This was okay, and 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 what's heavy about this word romance or this word love? This is a word that people use to do all types of wickedness upon the face of the planet right now, okay? Right under the guise of romance and love, and I ought to do a video on that word love and actually show you what it's supposed to, what actually, what it, what it actually means, we actually allude to within the scriptures, okay? Because it's not what it is represented within this society. Okay, and underneath that word romance, a lot of people do a lot of wickedness, man. Right, going into the going into adultery, going into all types of various uh, uh, abominations. Okay, homosexuality. Okay, 
All of them different things that they, they all spin off of this word, these two words, romance and, and, and love. That's how people get tried to justify their wickedness. Okay, it says this kind of love was it was originally a literary fiction. So this thing of romance has its origins within fiction. <laughs> okay, so within you know, medieval European literary, which is books and uh, uh, um, what you when you know as poetry and so on and so forth, this com concept of romance was um, was in incepted. Okay, and as you're gonna read here, it, it it gained a larger audience, and, and and by that, that's where you have this whole thing of 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 simp culture spewing out of. But if you really want to talk about ancient biblical, and I'm not even not even ancient biblical, the Bible that you have today does not talk about all of this romance and 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 and, 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 and emotional love and all and all of that, man. Okay, right. It talks about what we're gonna see within the scriptures in a second there. Okay, it talks about a man being the head of his household and ruling over his household. Okay, a, a family is supposed to be run as a business. Okay, that's how a family function. A family is supposed to run as the biggest business. I forget what I forget what movie that I've, I've seen that from. Okay, I forget what movie that that I, I recently seen that from. That statement from. But a family is supposed to be run like a business. Oh, get out. Okay, they 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 told you that. So it says this kind of love is or is original. Or, this kind of love is originally a literary fiction created for entertainment of nobility. But as time passed, these ideas about love changed and attracted a larger audience. Right In the high Middle Ages, a game of love developed around these ideas as a set of social practices. Loving nobility was considered to be an enriching and improving practice. Okay, courty loving it, it began in a ducal and, and princely course of um, acquainted uh, province of Champagne, okay, Dugo uh, Burgundy, right, and Norman uh, Kingdom of Sicily at the end of the 11th century. In essence, courty love, right, as you can see in the uh, depicted within the picture here, right, the uh, the ramp romantic gestured, uh, uh, romantic gestures expressed by a knight to to a lady, right, a woman of high, uh, so called high standing. Okay, uh, which this interaction, if you go into biblical, if you're talking about uh, uh, bi uh, bi biblical conduct, that's an act of adultery because the scripture says that what a man ain't supposed to be out there speaking with a with an, um with another man's woman. He ain't sitting at all, all with another man's wife because why? Because you're gonna get that fire roused up. Now, really, when you get into the understanding of how these different spirits work and how the Most High is gonna set it up within the kingdom, well, the Most High ain't gonna have it to where that feeling that you have. Uh, between a man and a woman is gonna be uh, is gonna be there if if you're dealing with another man's woman. Example of that is when you look at your mom, you don't look at your mom as a as another dude out there looks at your mom. That means that goes to show you that there's a, there's a, there's a spiritual side to it. Okay, so that, that 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 that's that's another thing. That's another proof that you ain't gonna have adultery in the kingdom. But more so than that, we know that we're gonna have the Lord's statutes commandments on the most side imprinted within our hearts. So that there ain't gonna be no more. A uh, 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 courty love, and you see this kind of courty love out there within the um within the workplace. Okay, that whole workplace in these churches, it ain't nothing but an an adulterous uh, uh, game, man. Okay, so let's carry on with this, not to sidetrack too too much. And it says at the end of the eleventh century, in essence, courty love was an exp experience between erotic desires and spiritual attainment, a love of one illicit and more uh, a morally elevating, passionate and and decline. Uh, and, and disciplined, humiliating and exalting and human uh, human and, and transcendent. So in essence, you can see um, the origins of this romance or simping, if you will, okay, is not biblical, okay? In fact, it's anti-biblical, as you can see. You've got adultery in there, okay? You've got a man compassing to a woman, okay? Trying to impress a woman, right? Which is not biblical, okay? So let's move on. And it's not natural too, <laughs> It's not natural too, and when you're talking about the biology of how a woman works, yeah, that that they'll 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 enjoy all of that for the power games and so on and so forth. But say let's say a real man walks in the in the building, they ain't with, down with all of that sim culture. Guess what? They're gonna gravitate towards that individual, okay? Because that's natural, okay? That's how the most I set up the algorithm, okay? So now let's go into monogamy, another uh, uh, simp idea. All right, simp culture idea set up by Esau. Okay, so it says why we think uh, monogamy is normal. Right, it says as I had noted in, the, in my last post, 
right? And this is some from Psychology Today. I've been on, I've, I've done, you know, they do good articles on psycho psychology today. They do very good articles on here. So I, I advocate anyone to go on there and read, read about, you know, stuff that's, you know, that's, that's meaningful, you know? So it says, as, as I noted in my, in my past post, right, the anthropographic and, and eth ethnographic evidence suggests that human nature is adapted to an ancestral mating system that are predominantly that was predominantly polygamous okay one one husband and multiple wives <laughs> let's read that again for the for the simps out there okay it says as i noted in my last post the entho and ethnographic evidence suggests that and i don't i better check out what that word ethnographic uh, 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 means so the ethnographic uh, evidence suggests that human uh, nature is adapted to an ancestral mating system that was predominantly polygamous, one husband, multiple wives. Most ancestral uh, uh, men aspired uh, to uh, polygamy, right? Even most, even though most impressive, uh, even most weren't impressive enough to uh, attract more than one wife. And says so some um, and some ancestral women preferred. To be co-wives of really impressive men, or of a really impressive man, than the sole wife of a second-rate one, and you, we see the same thing today. Okay, we see the same thing today because that's 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 just nature. Okay, that's just nature. Okay, it says in the other words, the uh, in other words, the genetic, uh, we are genetically encoded, psychologically, uh, the genetically encoded psychological machinery of human mating behavior was built by and for a world in, in which uh, striving for polygamy was often reproductively advantageous that's why people living in modern the day societies often seem inclined towards polygamy even in cultures that have uh, attempted to abolish it and we're going to see how this was abolished we're going to see that that actually comes from esau okay that's a thing that comes from esau and it says, and this at uh, this point raises a key question: Why have some cultures attempted to abolish uh, polygamy? Uh, if our ancestors, uh, our, our environments, ancestors uh, and uh, environments were so polygamous, why social? Uh, why is socially imposed uh, monogamy the moral and legal prohibition of poly uh, polygamy and so uh, common in the modern societies? Or, or more accurately, why is it more common in the West? Polygamy remains legal and um, uh, uh, and, and common in, in, in many non-Western societies, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, African and Islamic countries. Okay, right? Because that's that's natural, man. That's biblical, and that's what's natural. Okay, and they ain't, and, and notice the countries that they they've listed there. Those are countries where men are men. Okay. Now, for the most part, you ain't gonna really see too many simps out there within 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 sub-Saharan Africa and in them Islamic states, all right? Them Islamic countries, okay? So it says monogamy spread. Uh, monogamy spread in the West had something to do with the influence of cre uh, uh, monogamy spread in the West had something to do with the influence of Christianity, but not as much as you might expect. Mainstream Christianity has always endorsed and forced monogamy. All right, and as Christianity spread across Europe in countries following the fall of Rome, monogamy spread along with it. However, okay, however, Christianity's condemnation of the of polygamy has never been as straightforward as anti-polygamy church leaders would have you uh, would have you preferred, because no biblical passage ex explicitly prohibits a, a, a plural marriage. Now here's the proof of that. Isaiah the fourth chapter, this is prophecy. Isaiah for the fourth chapter on the first verse and says, In that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread, we are our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Okay, that's that's a, a, a plural marriage. And that's prophesied to come in the future. Okay. So the scriptures don't condemn it. And he's gonna get into it. Okay, and he says, Indeed, right, leaders of breakaway uh, Christians, uh uh uh, Christian polygamous sects like the 16th century Anna, Anna, Anabaptists and the 19th century American Mormons have always been eager to point out several uh, Old Testament figures, uh, polyg uh, polyg polyg polygonist, right? Abraham, for instance, had two wives simultaneously and Solomon uh, had 700 plus uh, 300 uh, concubines. 
right? Cases uh, for auto automatic association between Christianity and monogamy is weakened further by the fact that socially imposed monogamy was first established in ancient Greek and Rome, okay? Right? Here it is again. We're seeing the so-called white man, Esau, okay, disestablishing, right, the natural order of things. Okay, we see him disestablishing. Now, uh, really, you have to, I might have to, when they're saying ancient Greece and Rome, that's that's Esau. Okay, now, if they had said ancient Rome, then you have to do further digging and, you know, see, okay, all right, this was this established when, when, in the time of the Etruscans. But they're saying ancient Greece and Rome, which me, leads me to the, to, to the simple conclusion, this is Esau right here, disestablishing the natural order of things and promoting his weak, weak uh, uh, nature, which is that simp culture. That simp culture is non-biblical and it's anti-Israelite culture, okay? That is anti-Israelite culture, okay? And it says, uh, centuries before Christianity even existed, Greco-Roman laws, uh, centuries, you know, full stop. It says, Greco-Roman law prohibited any man from having more than one wife officially at at a time. That's not, that's not, that's not Israelite culture. That's simp Edomite culture. And when we go to the scriptures in the book of Genesis, the 25th chapter, what does it say? It says that Esau shall be weaker than, uh, uh, than Jacob. All right. And you can see one of the reasons why he's weaker than Jacob, because he believes that, that having one man is uh, one woman uh, to one man is advantageous. How can that be advantageous at all? OK, right. The scripture says that you can't pop her when she's on a period. So that's that's a certain amount of time. You can't believe no stress right there. OK, you're going to put her off. So you're just going to be what they in that bed all, all, all alone. Come on, man. Okay, let's be, let's get serious now. Okay, so it says it's true that forms of uh, de facto polygamy, e.g., uh, concubinage, uh, 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 sex with uh, with slaves, continue to be tolerated in these societies. Nevertheless, anti-polygamy laws made Greco-Roman society relatively uh, sexually um, egalitarian. Uh, is that egalita egalitarian? Right, because by preventing elite males by, uh, from illegally acquiring multiple wives, they improve the ability of lower ranking men to acquire wives of their own. Okay, so so that's the, that's the reason that they was using it. But see, that's not our culture. That doesn't come from our culture. Um, so, um, I mean, pretty much that's all I wanted from this article. Now, let's just read uh, a few examples of uh, of 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 a biblical uh, of uh, um, from the, from the from the Bible. So it says here, right, ancient uh, the. Right, the question of polygamy is an interesting one in most people's view today. Polygamy, polygamy is immoral, while the Bible nowhere explicitly condemns it. Right, in the first instance of polygamy, by, uh, bigamy in the Bible was a uh, Lamech in Genesis the fourth chapter and the nineteenth verse. Lamech married two women. Okay, several uh, prominent uh, men in the Bible were polygamists. Abraham, and that's important. Jacob, that's important. David, that's important. Uh, and Solomon, so King Solomon was your house himself, and he had hundreds of women. OK, and others all had multiple and, and, and others all had multiple wives. OK, so that whole sim culture. Right. Or for these two examples of which those are very important two examples, because those are the driving force. OK, for having it to where a man's going to bow down to a woman. OK, if a man's got two women, you really think he's bowing down to any neither one of them. No, he's he's a Israelite. He's going to be smooth about how he conducts his, his business. All right. He's going to be, he, you know, he's going to do what he's got to do. Right. But at the end of the day, when you got multiple wives, you ain't really too fussed about too many things right there. OK. And further to uh, 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 further to that, that thing of romance that goes out the window, it becomes more like a functioning business. OK. Right. In, in other words, you got employees, they all, all the employees are fighting for your time so they could be elevated so that the whole household could be elevated. OK, in, you know, roughly paraphrasing, uh, 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 roughly uh, pa uh, uh, paraphrasing how a, how a business works. OK, so with that, hopefully that was edifying. OK, uh, um, double honesty, apostles, a great millstone. Honesty, brothers, that be pushing this truth in sincerity. And I shall see you on the uh, Lord's will. I'll see you on the next one. Shalom.